Whenever we hear about stem cells in the media, it is almost always with regard to treatments. We talk about the extraction or isolation of stem cells from a source like the umbilical cord, the skin, uh, fat tissue or the blood, then their manipulation in the lab, and then their injection in the human body. But what we almost never talk about is the fact that we already have stem cells in our body. So what are they doing to begin with? What is the natural role of stem cells in the body? Understanding this literally changes our understanding of health and wellness, and I believe that it is called to change the way that we practice medicine. So let's look at what science has shown over the past 10 years. In the body, whenever there is an injury or a problem with a tissue, the affected tissue or the affected organ releases specific compounds that are very well known to trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. For example, if we take a heart attack, the day of a heart attack, when a person has a heart attack, on that day, within a few hours, the heart will release specific compounds very well known to trigger stem cell release. Within about a day, the number of stem cells will increase in the bloodstream uh, and will reach about three to five times the, the normal level. Then, on the third day, something else happens in the body. The affected tissue starts to release another compound called stromal derived factor 1, the only compound known to attract stem cells. When stem cells circulate in the fine capillaries of the affected tissue, this compound triggers the migration of stem cells out of the blood into the tissues. And upon contact with the debris of that tissue, uh, stem cells will start to proliferate and then differentiate in cells of that tissue. It is a beautiful phenomenon taking place in the body. We have literally discovered the natural system of repair, the natural system of renewal in the body. In this whole process, uh, there's nothing new in the fact of releasing cells from the bone marrow. We know that cells circulate in the bloodstream. We know that immune cells can migrate into tissues. What is fundamentally novel in all this understanding of the natural role of stem cells in the body is the fact that a cell of one type can transform into a cell of another type. This is fundamentally novel. Now, how did we discover this? Because it's been happening uh, in the body since humans uh, have existed, uh, since our birth, every day of our life, this is taking place in the body. Why are we discovering this just now? And it is a simple fact that in science, we identify cells by looking at them under the microscope. So we identify them on the basis of their physical and visible characteristic, their size, their shape, number of nucleus, specific organelles. So if we take a cell from the liver and we look at it, we can tell this is a liver cell. But it's impossible to tell that yesterday it was a stem cell. The process of transformation is completely invisible unless we have something to mark that cell. And this is really the big discovery that has allowed to, to put in evidence this whole phenomenon. What has allowed the observation of this whole phenomenon, to reveal this whole phenomenon, is the development of a tool called green fluorescent protein extracted from a jellyfish. Green fluorescent protein is a spontaneously fluorescent protein. Given that it's a protein, it's very easy to derive its DNA. When we have the DNA, we can inject the DNA in the nucleus of a stem cell. So if that stem cell proliferates and becomes a population of, let's say, liver cell, when we look at the liver cells under a microscope, we can tell that they are liver cells but simply using a fluorescent lamp, they will start to glow. So we can tell that these liver cells were stem cells the day before. It reveals the entire process. So using this tool, green fluorescent protein, we can show, for example, that after muscle injury, an entire muscle can completely repair and regenerate from stem cells. If someone has a heart attack, we can see that in the part of the heart that was damaged, on the day of the heart attack, we find new cells and they are green, coming from the bone marrow. The exact same phenomenon in the skin, in the lung, uh, in the kidneys, in the pancreas. And in that manner, using this tool, green fluorescent protein, we can show that stem cells have the ability of becoming virtually any kind of cell types in the body. So we have the release of stem cells from the bone marrow, their circulation in the bloodstream, their migration into tissue, their uh, proliferation, and then their differentiations uh, differentiation in cells of that tissue. It is literally the natural process of tissue repair in the body. What recent studies are telling us is that this whole process of tissue repair 
uh, is also taking place when we do not have an injury or do not have a problem. Every day of our lives, stem cells are released from the bone marrow and they migrate in various tissues and organs, renewing and, and, uh, and maintaining various tissues and organs. What we are learning is that each tissue and organ is renewing itself uh, at, at certain rates. For example, we have a new liver every two, three years, a new pancreas every four years, new lung every four years, a new heart every 25 to 40 years, a new skin every month or two. The time frame here is not relevant. It's only this general understanding that each organ and tissue of the body is constantly renewing itself. Now, keep this in mind. We'll come back to this in a moment. Today, if we looked at uh, science in general, medical science in general, the understanding of disease formation is cellular loss. If we lose the cells making insulin, we have diabetes. If we lose the cells making dopamine in the brain, we have Parkinson. If we lose cells in the retina, we have macular degeneration. And, and in that manner, the development of virtually every single degenerative disease is the result of the loss of a specific type of cells in the body. So now let's come back to what I was saying before. If I have a pancreas every four years, that means that I have had many pancreases in my life. Now, the, the time frame for renewal is not that relevant. We just have to understand that I have had more than one pancreases and I am not diabetic. Therefore, cellular loss is not the cause of diabetes or any other problem as a matter of fact. What we are learning is that we, we do not only have cellular loss. There's a whole new dimension to this whole concept uh, and it is tissue renewal. Health is a balance between cellular loss and tissue renewal. And this is an entirely new understanding of health and wellness. So with this in mind, how, what is the difference between a person that developed, for example, Parkinson and someone else developed diabetes? Why would many people develop different kinds of problems in their lives? And it is a whole series of factors. For example, your genetics, past injuries, uh, exposure to environmental toxins, uh, stress, your ability to rest, lifestyle, your diet, your mental attitude, all of these factors we can agree are very, very unique to each individual. It is the pressure applied to your body and the ability of your body to manage that pressure. And according to any one of these factors, uh, genetics, past injuries, exposure to certain toxin and stress will lead one individual to develop one problem or another. But what we need to understand is that life and health is not just about losing cells and slowly moving in the direction of a problem. What we're discovering is that there's another side of this entire picture. We have the ability to gain back, to renew tissue, to support this natural process of tissue renewal. So the problem comes when the, when the, the process of losing cells actually exceeds our ability to renew. So when we discover all of this, it also gives us a new strategy in health and wellness. We can tip that balance and enhance the process of tissue repair and tissue renewal by supporting stem cell release, stem cell circulation, stem cell migration, stem cell proliferation. In today's society, how do we define health? We define health, strangely enough, by the absence of disease. If I don't have a problem, I consider myself healthy. But understanding this natural process of tissue renewal gives us for the first time a new understanding of health. Health goes far beyond simply not having symptoms or not having problems. It is giving us for the first time a real platform to develop optimal health and that's what we're engaged in. 